After the Second World War, the attitude towards steam locomotives was starting to change. People were starting to realise how labour-intensive they were to maintain and operate in comparison to emerging diesel and electric engines. As such, when the UK's railways were nationalised in 1948, it soon became a priority for British Rail to shift from using steam power to diesel-electric, and by 1955, modernisation plans were put in place to speed along the process. Southern Railways was one of the four companies prior to nationalisation that had considered the longevity of steam locomotives. So when their chief designer, Oliver Bullied, was tasked with designing a new steam locomotive for freight and passenger work, he decided to try and give it all the comforts of modern diesels and electric engines, and ended up with something... unusual. Bullied took inspiration from his Q1s that he built during the war, which proved to be lightweight and easy to maintain. He also considered the advantages diesel locomotives had over steam, such as a cab at either end removing the need for turntables, and the engine being mounted on articulated bogies rather than having wheels fixed to the frames, allowing them to negotiate tighter curves. After Bullied finalised the design, construction began at Brighton Railway Works in 1946. The end result looked something like this. Nope, your eyes do not deceive you. That is a steam locomotive. On top of having a cab at either end and sitting on articulated bogies, the boiler could hit 280 psi and was mounted to one side of the frames, leaving hallway space inside for the crew to move from one end of the locomotive to the other without having to get out. The bogies could be interchanged with new ones should a fault occur, making them easier to repair should they break, and the steel casing meant the engine could be pulled through a carriage washer, making it much easier to keep clean. Technically speaking, because it never pulled a tender, it was classified as a tank engine. From here, however, that's about all the praise the engine really got. The first of the leader class, as it was known, wasn't fully completed until 1949, about a year after nationalisation had occurred. British Rail showed some interest in the project, but weren't keen on completing any more units until the prototype had been properly tested. While its quirks and comforts may have been appreciated by some members of the footplate crew, there were many shortcomings that made it somewhat of a white elephant to others, namely the firemen. The smoke box had an issue maintaining a vacuum to help draw air through the fire. This was because of a labour-saving innovation Bullied had added, a sliding hatch that allowed ash to be dumped out onto the track while the engine was moving. Ash would build up around the edge of the hatch and prevent it from shutting properly, causing air to leak in. The design of the firebox meant the fire was concentrated in a smaller area and the firehole door was offset to the left of the boiler, making it much harder to evenly lay coal into the fire. A firebrick arch was later added, but was problematic as it would cause flames to enter the cab if the fireman wasn't careful. The firebricks frequently collapsed into the fire and so were replaced with a cast iron substitute. This, however, simply melted from the heat and so thicker firebricks were used instead. What was worse was the fireman's cab was relatively cramped, only made more unbearable by the firebox occasionally spitting flames. The confined space also meant the cab got very hot, with many firemen leaving the door open hoping to get some sort of ventilation. The leader eventually got the nickname of the Chinese Laundry because of the heat and humidity that would build up in the fireman's cab, with some measurements showing that it could reach up to 50 degrees Celsius. It was also pointed out that the fireman's cab only had one door, and that if the engine were to ever roll onto its side, the fireman would be trapped, which didn't sit too well with the railway trade union. During a brief maintenance service, it was found that the engine's centre of gravity was shifted to one side thanks to the positioning of the firebox and boiler. The other side of the engine was balanced out with scrap metal, but this led to the locomotive simply being too heavy for some of the routes it was meant to travel along. The engine was known to possess outstanding steaming characteristics and could keep up with its scheduled times when properly fired, occasionally running ahead of schedule. However, it consumed water at a rapid rate, and its height meant it couldn't fit under most water cranes, making it awkward to refill, causing it to lose any time it may have gained on a run. As such, the prototype leader was never used in revenue earning service. Its valve gears were also prone to many faults, but I'm not even going to pretend like I know how they worked. Suffice to say, the leader was 
was a bold step in a new direction, only to end up losing its footing. However, it may not entirely be the engine's fault that it was deemed a failure and ultimately scrapped. Many results of the trials were noted as conspicuous by the absence of praise for its impressive steaming capabilities, braking system, and adhesion to the rails thanks to its twin bogey setup. Some believe this to be because of various conservative members of British Rail seeing it as too revolutionary or disruptive of the status quo. By late 1950, the leader had shown some of the many flaws that came with putting a case around a steam boiler. It was harder to maintain, the weight was excessive, and the heat made working conditions dire. British Rail at this point also needed to consider its reputation, as it was still relatively new and needed people to put faith in them now that the railways were run by the taxpayer. And the last thing they wanted was for this experimental locomotive to chew through money and tarnish their image. It had already cost them nearly £179,000 and showed no significant benefit over a standard steam locomotive design. In 1951, the prototype leader and the other four that had been in various phases of construction were all broken up. The leader, despite its shortcomings, was a valiant attempt by Bully to reimagine the contemporary design of steam locomotives and further improve upon the features most steam locomotives locomotives lacked. Should it have been more successful, it's likely the leader would have prolonged the life of steam on British rails. But whatever the reasons, be it bias against their design from higher-ups at British Rail, the mounting costs of testing it with taxpayer money, or simply the many flaws in its design, the leader just didn't quite make the cut. A shame, really, as it did have some innovative ideas for its time, and certainly would have been interesting to watch in motion. Subscribe for more.